In today's video, we're going to be looking at the 10 most common errors that you will encounter in Python and obviously how you can fix them. So to get started, let's take a look at the indentation error, which is one of the most common errors you will encounter and probably the easiest one to fix. So for this example, I have a function that gets some data. And of course, I want to actually get that data and return that data from whatever source I'm getting it from. Now, in most languages, you need to use curly brackets to define blocks of code. When you're trying to encapsulate them in a function or in a for loop, usually you would use some curly brackets. But in Python, we rely heavily on indentation, which means to define a block, we need to indent it. Now, both of these belong to the same block because they are on the same indentation level. And if we were to run the script, it will run perfectly fine because we've indented everything properly. But in any case, if we were to have print on the same indentation level as the function definition, we're going to get an indentation error because right now we defined a function, but we didn't put anything inside the body. So Python is reading it like this. It's reading it as if we didn't insert anything inside this function. We just defined the function. We didn't put anything inside and then we skipped to the next line. So this here is not considered part of the function. And to fix it, we just need to indent. Now it is considered part of the function, even if we have these three empty spaces. Another example is with the for loop. If we were to create a for loop that just loops through this range of three, and we were to print i on the outer indentation error, Python would have no idea that this print statement belongs to this for loop. And if we were to run this, we would get another indentation error because it expected us to actually put something inside this for loop. And to actually do that, we need to create a block by indenting. And that will fix the issue. Moving on, we have something that's called a syntax error. And you will run into a syntax error anytime you try to tell Python something that it cannot understand. For example, typing in a equals one, is syntax that makes sense. Here we're assigning the value of one to a. Python understands that, so it can do something with that. But at any point, if you type in something such as a exclamation mark 10, Python has no idea what you're doing here. It doesn't know what this syntax is. This exclamation mark has nothing to do with the language, which means that if you were to write this combination, Python wouldn't be able to handle that. It wouldn't be able to read that and it wouldn't be able to do anything with that. Besides give us back a syntax error telling us that we did something that doesn't make sense to Python. So it doesn't understand what we want to do. A very common place you will encounter this is when you're creating a function and you pass in something such as hello or whatever argument you want to pass in and you don't close the parentheses. To us, it's quite straightforward that we want to print hello, but the rules of Python dictate that we must encapsulate this argument with some parentheses and those must close. We can't just have one parentheses on the left and none on the right because Python wouldn't understand. I mean, this is a lot of empty space that Python doesn't know what to do with. And obviously, if we were to run this, we would get a syntax error that that parentheses was never closed. But as soon as we add this parentheses, it doesn't matter how many spaces there are inside here, it's going to be considered valid syntax. And when we run it, we will get hello printed to the console. Up next, we have two errors that I'm going to combine together. One is the module not found error and the other one is the import error. So for this example, I'm going to just paste this in. Here we're importing requests so that we can get the status of a website. And we just want to know if a website is online or not. So here we pass in the URL. We make the request using the requests module and we return that status code. Then later we pick a random website and we print the value of the status. Right now, if we were to run this, we will get a module not found error because there's no module named requests. And a lot of beginners make this mistake because they go to YouTube, they follow a tutorial, they see someone type in import blah, blah, blah. And that module is not part of Python. It's not inbuilt to Python. It's actually external functionality that they need to install. So Python will not be able to find that and it will give us a module not found error. The easiest way to fix this, of course, is to pip install this module or to download this module. And as soon as Python can find that module inside our folder, it's going to be able to use it. And we're not going to have that module not found error anymore. We're actually going to be able to get the status back using the module that we needed. 
and an import error works very similarly. It still has to deal with us trying to import functionality that doesn't exist. For example, we can try to import from the math module the make money method. And if we try to do that, if we try to call make money, it will theoretically exist because we imported it here. But if we actually run the script, we will get this import error that says cannot import name make money from math because it just doesn't exist. It's just not there. We invented something and it could not find it. And you might actually encounter this more with different Python versions because you might try to import something that exists in Python 3.12, but that didn't exist in Python 3.11 or prior to that. Error number four, name error. For this example, I'm going to create a variable and assign it the value of 10. And then I'm going to try to print this variable. Now, knowing that Python is case sensitive, this is not going to work. Right now, if we were to run it, we will run into a name error because this name was not defined. And this happens to a lot of beginners because these look incredibly similar. And if it wasn't for the syntax highlighting, I probably wouldn't be able to spot it if it was a bigger project. So all that name error is trying to say is that you're trying to refer to something that hasn't been named or that hasn't been defined. So to fix that, you just need to refer to the correct name. And I see a lot of people making this mistake when they are working with classes. So this is just a regular class called fruit that has an initializer that gives the fruit a name, and then they might try to instantiate it later. So here we have a variable called my fruit, which is of type fruit, and then they try to instantiate it with a lowercase f. And that doesn't work because this name does not exist. This is not the same as the fruit. To make sure you actually instantiate the fruit, you need to refer to the correct name. Otherwise, you're going to get another name error. That name fruit is not defined. Did you mean fruit? So always make sure you refer to the correct name if you want to avoid a name error. Error number five, type error. Type errors are quite straightforward when you are dealing with primitive data types, such as integers and strings. If we were to type in print one plus hello, obviously these two types aren't really compatible, even if JavaScript devs are probably laughing right now. But in Python, if we were to run this, we would get this type error that we have unsupported operand types for integer and string. And that's because you cannot concatenate these two in Python. There's no functionality defined on how these two should be added together. So that's why we get back a type error. And even if it's not a primitive data type, it could also be some sort of user defined class, such as a fruit. If we were to instantiate this fruit and we were to add 10 to it, we would also get a type error because there's no functionality defined on how these two should be combined. And this also goes for other operations, such as trying to access whatever's at the index of two from this integer. You cannot index integers. So this operation does not make sense. And that's going to give us an error back saying that the int object is not susceptible. Error number six, index error. For this example, I created a list of type string, which is just a group of people such as Mario, James, and Luigi. And what I want to do here is access James. So to do so, I'm going to print the people at the index of one, since indexing in Python starts with zero. So Mario has the value of zero, or has the position of zero, James has the position of one, and Luigi has the position of two. So naturally, if we want to access James, we'll pass in one, and that will give us James back. But at any point, if we insert an index that is not in this range, which means if we insert anything that's more than two, we're going to get an exception, such as with four, we will get this index error that the list index is out of the range because there are no elements past the index of two. So it doesn't exist and that will give us back an index error. Moving on to error number seven, the value error. In this example, I created a list of integer which consists of one, two, three, and four. And what I want to do is remove a number that doesn't exist. So what I'm going to do is call numbers dot remove and I'm going to pass in 10. And this will raise a value error because even if the operation made sense, the value did not exist. In other words, we provided the right type, but the wrong value. And a very common example is when we are trying to cast a type from one type to another, such as if we want to get the float of this string that says word, 
we're going to get a type error because float can accept any type of argument, which means we've provided a correct type, but not a correct value. And as you can see, we got a value error back that we could not convert this string to float. And you might be asking, why does it allow us to convert strings? Well, the thing is that with strings, we can provide a value such as 10.5, and that will work just fine. But we do need to make sure that the value is correct. So being able to provide a string does make sense, but providing a value that's not a number does not make sense. And that's why we get a value error back because it's of the right type, but the value is wrong. Up next, we have error number eight, which is a recursion error. And to demonstrate how it works or how we run into this error, I've created a function called make request. And all it does is print that we're making some sort of request whether it's an API request or a request to connect to internet, it's just a simple request. But what we're going to do is make the rookie mistake to call the function inside the function, creating an endless loop. Now, if you were to make an API request such as this one, you will probably end up spending a lot of money making all those API requests. So of course, this is something you kind of want to avoid at all costs, but it doesn't mean it's never going to happen. So it's good to understand where this comes from. So right here, let's actually try to run this function and see what happens. And as expected, we ran into a recursion error that the maximum recursion depth was exceeded. And luckily our system puts a recursion limit into place to prevent our program from making this call indefinitely. I mean, we still did make the request many, 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 many times, but not indefinitely. There was a certain point that Python or our system said, hey, we're doing this far too many times. I'm just going to raise an exception so we can stop it in case you made this by mistake. Although if you meant to do this on purpose, there are ways of lifting that limit so that you can truly do this indefinitely. Error number nine, attribute error. For this example, I created a class called calculator and in the initializer, I gave this calculator a version number or a, just a version. Then I provided one method, which is an add method. So we can add any two numbers together and return the result as a float. And since it doesn't have anything to do with the instance of the class, I'm using the add static method decorator to say that this method belongs in the class, even though it doesn't have anything to do with the instance. Anyway, next I'm going to create my if name is equal to main check and instantiate the calculator. So we have my calculator, which is of type calculator, and that's equal to calculator with the version of 1.0. And at this point, we can use the attributes and the methods. So if I want to add one plus two, we can do that using the add method, which I defined up here in the calculator. And we can also refer to the version number. So if we were to run this, we would get three and 1.0 because one plus two is three and the version was set to 1.0. So that works just fine. But next I'm going to remove my calculator and here instead of add, I'm going to type in divide. Now we're going to divide two by one, which should end up being two. So let's run this and see what happens. And what you should get is an attribute error that the calculator object has no attribute divide. And that's because we did not define that functionality inside our class. And by using dot notation, we referred to it as an attribute, which means it still tried to find that. It didn't know it didn't exist just yet. And since it couldn't, it gave us this attribute error. And this also goes for attributes such as the version. Maybe we thought that my calculator had a name. So we tried to access the attribute of name. And when we ran it, we learned that this calculator object has no attribute name. And you'll probably see this in other modules such as the math module or any module you import. If you were to refer to something that doesn't exist, such as math, hello, and you were to try to run that, you would get an attribute error that the module math has no attribute of hello, because that functionality just does not exist in that module. And finally, for error number 10, we have a key error. So here I'm going to create a dictionary, which is called users. And this dictionary is of type integer and string. So each user has a user ID, that's what we're going to call it starting from zero and counting upwards. So Mario has the ID of zero and James has the ID of one. And if we want to get a value from the dictionary, we're going to have to use the dictionary and the key value. So this is not the index, but this is actually the key. So referring to zero will give us back Mario. And we can even change this to one and two, just to show you that it's not the index. 
So now if we want to refer to Mario, we need to refer to the key of 1. And that will give us Mario back. But at any point, if you were to insert a key that does not exist, such as 3, you're going to get back a key error because it was unable to find that key inside the dictionary. Right now we only have the keys 1 and 2, and since 3 doesn't exist, it gave us back the key error of 3. So those were the 10 most common errors that you will probably encounter in Python. Do let me know in the comment section down below if there were other errors that you encountered when you were learning Python. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. What is this star over here? Meet new UI. Compact, light, dark system, finish setup. That's okay.